Hello, everyone, and welcome to this time at Guildmaster Gaming. Today we have Ben Wong, who is the director and actually writer of uh, Ba, a feature film that is going to be showing this year at FilmQuest, and I'm sure it's going to be showing a lot of other places. It's a good quality film. So we're going to ask uh, Ben, please tell us about yourself and your film. Yeah, thanks so much, Dan, for having me. Um, excited to be on here. Uh, my film is, like you mentioned, it's called Ba, which is uh, Chinese for dad, sort of a, a informal way of saying that. Um, the film was really inspired by my experience of becoming a dad and just not knowing how to navigate that um, that whole sort of new life experience. Uh, you know, really feel, you know, when I first had my daughter, I was filled with like a lot of self-doubt and sort of anxiety that I was doing things wrong and sort of ran with those um, those feelings and magnified them. And that was sort of the, the inspiration for this film to take my, really my, my deepest, darkest fears as a dad and uh, magnify them on screen. Okay. So you kind of, as it says in the thing, you use a Faustian, you know, um, also not deal <laughs> to come yeah. his, for the character. So kind of, you, you know where that inspiration kind of comes from because it's pretty self-evident. But for so much of the other film, there's it's clear that you have some other inspirations you're drawing on besides just your own personal issues. So what are some of the things that got you to really kind of put together some of the look and the feel of your movie? Yeah, you know, I kind of I kind of realized this after watching the film a few times at um, actually festivals. And I, I realized probably the core inspiration for it was uh, the Twilight Zone, the Twilight Zone, like the original episodes, you know, that ran in um, like the 60s and whatnot. Uh, and I think, you know, I saw those episodes as a kid growing up and I think they just indelibly left a mark on me. Uh, um, you know, they weren't obviously like horror, straight horror, but they were just always um, horrific situations and very, very creepy. And I think that tone is something that I took, really was the nexus for, um, I think the tone of this film, which is not, a, it's not a straight horror film, but it's um, a horrific situation and it's creepy. And it's sort of taken this uh, fantastical situation and treating it as reality, which I think the Twilight Zone you know, did so many amazing, did so many, um, so many times amazingly. So, yeah, um, I think, you, oh, yeah, keep going if you got. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Let me, my phone is, uh, <laughs> let me just put it in silent mode. Sorry about that. No, no problem. I was just going to say, you, I think you nailed it because when I saw it, it was, it's not really horror, uh, yeah. the way, of how we expect, but it really hits on the fantastic. Uh, yeah. That level of, way it plays out with who he is and what he's going through and how it actually even the twist at the end of how it all ends up mm. kind of nice but so are you kind of going into your we've talked about the inspiration of the film now you got this going forward you know it's a very solid film but is there more to the story or is this you're ready to move on to something else after this it's funny you ask that. I mean, I've every time now when we um, get together with the cast and crew at a festival showing um, and sort of have a reunion, we always joke about sequels and, you know, not, I don't want to give too much of the story away, but just sort of what would happen, let's say five years in the future, 10 years in the future and how kind of how that would all play out. Um, I don't think the, I, I like the story as it is and sort of it feels self-contained and how it ends um you know i mean i would never say if, if the right idea comes along or someone suggests something then absolutely i'd be i'd love to like sort of i would love to reunite with the cast and crew i mean that would be that would be so fun so um yeah i can't say i would be totally opposed to it but um i sort of see it as a self-contained story um i mean another thing too is just I realized something about myself working on this film because it, it is a dark sort of, you know, grittier film. And, um, you know, when I'm working on a film, when I'm writing it or directing it, you know, I guess uh, it sounds, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to compare it to like method acting or anything like that, but it's sort of like method writing and method directing for me. And I really try to like inhabit the experiences that, um, the characters go are going through and because it's such a dark film I I found myself just 
uh, exhausted. You know, I found myself going into this place of like, I think emotionally and physically drained just because I, I was, you know, empathizing with the character situation so long. And, you know, making an indie film is such a long journey. You know, this is, you know, now you're entering year five, um, you know, from when I first wrote the screenplay. So, you know, I wasn't in the the space of the film the entire time, but um, yeah, I found myself, I, I think just, you know, for future projects, I, I, I would want to have more moments of like levity, of joy that I can sort of hold on to. Um, you know, it, it, it did, it was, it was just very emotionally draining to be sort of in this, this dark space for like years on end. And I didn't anticipate that it would take this long. So yeah, I, I would, so long, long, long would an answer to your question. Um, I would be open to exploring this role some more, but you know, tonally, I would like to add some levity in there. Okay. So you did kind of touch on one thing that draws my interest. You were saying, you know, some of your inspiration was becoming a dad. Yeah. And this was such a hard one because of the empathy and emotional response that you're getting. So in a sense, was it a cathartic type experience for you to kind of be facing up to maybe some of your own fears and moving forward? I think it was, I, I, in some ways it was, I think it was really cathartic to write it on the page um, and just get those feelings out. Um, so that was really cathartic. I think once other people start getting involved, actors, cast and crew, uh, it sort of becomes its own thing and it takes on a life of its own. So I, I beyond the writing, it, 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 you know, it's sort of this community joint effort that we're all working on. Um, so in, in, in a way at that moment, it, it becomes less cathartic, I think for me, because now we're just like, let's make the, let's tell the best possible story we can. Okay. Um, but yeah, the writing process, I think, was definitely cathartic uh, initially. You know, when you talk about the dark aspects, I've worked with some authors that have written some very dark materials, and they had the same, mm. like you were saying, once they were done, they had to break away and yeah. just do something else to, to lighten their life up. So Absolutely, I'm going to ask yeah. this kind of out of order from what a lot of times I do. Sure. So, so what do you do, Ben, to lighten yourself up and kind of get away from the pressure of <laughs> filmmaking? Oh man, uh, I probably could do some more lighting up, but I'm um, just spending time with my kids. My my daughter, who is the um, inspiration for this film, and originally I can't believe it. You know, she's like nine now, so just hanging out with her. I have a son, so I think I got over a lot of my fears and self doubt because you know I did it all again. <laughs> so um, yeah, I have a younger son and daughter, just hanging out with them. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm so thankful that. Yeah, I think this this film sort of blurs the line between fantasy and reality and sort of tries to like meld them um, into a new thing. But a lot of it is really based in reality. And I think uh, not having to inhabit the role um, that the main character does, I feel, I feel so lucky. I mean, just like, uh, you know, doing, I don't want to get into like the, uh, I don't want to be, you know, cheesy and stuff, but just the small things with my, you know, my kids and just like the the simple, simple joys. Um, yeah, the, spending time with my kids is probably the best, best therapy for me. Okay. So we've kind of talked about, you know, what's kind of come, where the film came from. Whereabouts are you in your festival run? Is it near the beginning, the end? Yeah, we're, I think we're heading towards the end. Um, I, uh, Sorry, I uh, I think I can say this. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, we're the goal has always been to like have distribution. So I, I would want to say, I guess I can say we're like pretty close to that goal at this point. So, um, right. yeah, I think because we're, you know, hopefully distribution is happening. Um, we're sort of near the the tail end of the festival run, and and something I've learned about festivals is I feel like we've been tr we've tried to be sort of selective instead of just you know spraying it out everywhere because I, I really feel like when I, I can actually go to a festival and like be there and meet people, meet you at film quest, meet other filmmakers, audience members, you know, that's, that's like the awesome thing about festivals, you know, is like that, that human to human interaction, seeing a film in the theater, which is like rare, more and more rare these days. Um, that's, that's really cool. So yeah, I don't, I, we've had a really nice festival run. I don't, I don't really, 
see ourselves going to that many more festivals and maybe unless maybe you know the right one just kind of reaches out uh so yeah and it sounds like you're in negotiations with distribution. I know that's always kind of hush hush stuff. So we'll just leave it at that. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but okay. So we've kind of talked about your film and where it's going. But now let's get back to Ben. Um, what was your drive, your inspirations, or whatever you know, to become a filmmaker? So I kind of came to filmmaking pretty late. Um, I studied engineering in school, uh, nothing to do with filmmaking. Uh, I started doing web design, which was, you know, visual, but again, nothing to do with, uh, filmmaking. And I sort of did that all throughout my twenties and, you know, filmmaking was just not something I, I wouldn't even consider in my wildest dreams. Um, but I think I, I was basically, uh, it was, I was 29 and I had a friend of mine ask me to direct a commercial out of the blue. Um, so I, uh, back then we didn't have YouTube videos. I just, I, I started reading books. I just tried to find out whatever I could about directing and being on set was like just an absolute blast. It was the funnest thing I've ever done in my life. And I was like, I have, I want to do more of this. How can I do more of this? So I was basically a 29 year old that decided uh, I want to do filmmaking however I can. And that sort of kicked off a long journey, um, man. That's like not quite two decades, like over a decade, decade and a half of just this. <laughs> I thought it'd be so much easier. I mean, so naively, I thought it would be, I knew, I knew, I knew it wouldn't be just like I could do it instantly, but I actually thought I would be able to make a film in like a few years. I don't know. I guess that naivety, that like incredible naivety, that, am I saying that right? Na naiveness, Na naivety that I had, um, I think, you know, hopefully it fueled me, you know, it allowed me to go on this like decades long journey, essentially, um, to try to make films. Um, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing <laughs> when I first started in this. Yeah. So it sounds like you started out doing engineering in the IT world. Uh, I studied mechanical engineering. Uh -huh. I was really into race cars. I thought I wanted to be a race car engineer, dabbled in that a little bit. And then this was, you know, I'm dating myself, but um, around the first like dot com boom, I started a web design company with my friend. That was really fun because it was visual. I really liked, you know, I'd always played with graphics and photography and whatnot. Um, yeah, but I mean, filmmaking is just one of those things. I grew up like in, in Davis, which is a small agricultural town in Northern California. You just don't, you don't even like, it, you know, the guidance counselor in Davis is not telling you that filmmaking is like one of your viable career options. So <laughs> I, I just had to ask because my previous existence, as I tell people is I was in the pharmaceutical industry, uh, 25 years quality engineering and documentation. My, my specialty was technical writing. And I always joked with mm. people that my job as a technical writer was to translate engineering into English. So mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's you're doing the Lord's work. <laughs> as a technical writer yeah for sure. so i always when i run into people say oh as an engineer it's like oh what type because <laughs> yeah i definitely i mean as a you know when i studied engineering it was kind of like one of those things i thought i wanted to be a race car like mechanic engineer um, or just like a car you know race car was sort of like a little bit very dreamy but you know at least um like a car engineer or something like that um but I definitely felt by like year two of engineering school, I'm like, I just, I can't do this for the rest of my life. This isn't really me, you know, but just powered through and graduated and got the degree and stuff. So <laughs> if anything, it, it, it taught me how to just, uh, I guess, power through. It was a life lesson later on when I would try to power through uh, filmmaking for like years and years. So. Okay. So you mentioned the Twilight Zone as an inspiration for your film, but what other shows or movies or inspirations for you to finally say, yeah, I'm going to, I'll go ahead and try this. Uh, inspirations for me. Um, I, you know, I think just, I grew up without cable television. Um, you know, again, like I said, I grew up in Davis. It was a small town. There was a movie theater and this is back when movie theaters really had two screens, you know, not like the cinema plexes of today. Um, so just all the usual classics, I think, of the 80s, 
growing up as an 80s kid, uh, you know, Star Wars, Indiana Jones. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I mean, later on, I was really inspired by James Cameron, um, you know, the Alien movies, obviously all the, the Terminator films. It really just, like, I think, kind of like the mainstream blockbusters. It wasn't until um, really, I would say, my 20s where I started to experience a little bit more independent film, a little bit more foreign film, and that sort of opened up a whole new, I think, um, world for me. Um, I can't, there's no, I'm always the worst at this question because there's, there's so many movies I love and I don't really have favorites. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think just, you know, experience a lot, of, experiencing a lot of foreign films and any films in my 20s sort of just opened my eye to what film could be. And in a way, I also felt more accessible because there were like more human centric stories, you know. I don't know if, I mean, I know some filmmakers, grow up wanting to make you know star wars and whatnot but that's sort of like <laughs> that seems really intimidating to me so i think you know um discovering independent film felt like oh wow this is something where i can tell like a human centric story and it, it felt uh felt more doable too okay so on that note kind of looking at you finished up bob you're saying you know it's that one's kind of Put away for now so what type of projects are you working on or do, can we maybe watch for yeah so i i am like so excited to write um i have so many stories right now really just don't have enough time um developing multiple stories i haven't really talked about this but i'm i'm really interested in um writing screenplays but instead of taking the screenplay and then trying to turn it into film, um, turning it into a graphic novel first and using that sort of as a prototype for the film and also a way to just, you know, get feedback, hopefully gain interest, sort of see what people respond to. Um, I figure I can make, um, you know, easier said than done. And maybe, maybe even like the 29 year old, again, that thought they can make a movie in a few years, but I feel like I can make, you know, one or two graphic novels a year um, that, that feels very doable, whereas, you know, an indie film just feels like a long, multi-year process. So I'm excited to, you know, try to tell stories this way. I haven't done it before, so I might, you know, hit some roadblocks. But, um, yeah, I'm really excited uh, by the idea of telling these stories and getting them out in some form. Because I think that's the other thing, too, is like, as you know, like, I mean, making an indie film is basically receiving 100 yeses in a row. And it's so... It, it, it doesn't even matter. Sometimes it doesn't really matter whether the story is good or not. It's just, it's a simple, you know, draw of luck. So um, knowing that I can write these stories and they can get out there in some form is like really um, exciting to me, you know? So yeah, I think that's what's next for me. Um, and then I, of course, love to take one of these and, you know, turn them into films, film or films as well. Yep. So do you have, can you drop any hints of what type of stories you're looking at creating? Well, like I, I mentioned earlier, um, they would have more levity in them, you know. Um, they're a combination of like thrillers, sci-fi. I mean, they're sort of all like mashed up in terms of genre. Um, you name it, horror, sci-fi, thriller. Uh, yeah, it's all there, so... No, that sounds good to me because I'm I'm the chapter president for a writing group. Uh, oh, cool. We're the infinite monkey genre writers, so I understand what you mean about all the different genres. That's why the monkey's back here. Uh, oh, nice. <laughs> um, what do you think? What do you think about Tim Travers? By the way, I haven't seen it, but I saw I saw your review, and I've been like dying to see it. It was a lot that, that, that... It was a lot of fun. I will say that uh, part of the fun was it was a short at Film Quest a few years ago. And at the festival, they announced that they did get the backing to turn it into a feature. So we we're all kind of going, okay, we're going to see where this goes. And one of the fun things we found about it was the lead actor was brought in from the short to do the to the feature. So oh, cool. So I without giving a lot of away, it was a lot of fun to watch because you could see a lot of the original short in it. Mm. Like you said, not taking it and you know, just putting it in and saying but the the storyline was there yeah so yeah i heard it i heard it just like hilarious and like 
yeah that's that <laughs> seems right in my alley you know just genre mashing and you know funny little, and all that stuff yeah. and a little bit of adult orientation i wouldn't take your kids uh <laughs> okay <laughs> good to know <laughs> So you'd mentioned that one and you got your, your books that you're looking at wanting to do kind of, let's flip this. You said you'd never really had the idea of wanting to do like a star Wars episode, anything like that. So what would be Ben's dream project if he could do anything he wanted? Mm, um, I, I'm really enjoying um, what I'm getting to do right now, which is just write these stories. And some of them are big, some of them are small, but I kind of like the idea of sticking to, to smaller stories, you know, that aren't like super big budget just because it feels intimate um, as far as I know when, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's the best thing is, uh, is, is working, I think with a small team that you're, you know, you have great relationships with. So um, I don't know what it's like to work on a project. I guess it's not a fantasy of mine to work on a huge, huge, project you know i think it's a it's a, a dream of mine to work just with like awesome people and like have a great time and do something that you believe in you okay. know so um yeah and i think there's and i think there's ways to tell really fun stories i mean i kind of feel like i know <laughs> i i really need to see the tim travers movie but i feel like that wasn't like a really big budget film but it had a lot of ideas you know in it so um and maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong about that film, but I think the idea of that film is just something that has a lot of ideas and is packed um, with interesting stuff, but not necessarily like huge budget. I think is really interesting. I mean, another film I love is Coherence, um, which was like a really small indie sci-fi film, and you know, very small budget. It was shot over five days, but it it was just packed with ideas and you know things that you hadn't seen before. So. Yeah, a dream project is something that's just like super interesting and um, something that you haven't seen before, I think. Not okay. necessarily large scale or anything like that. No, I think that's very admirable. You know, it's saying something that kind of hits from your heart more than to the pocketbook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish I wish it hit my pocketbook more. That'd be great. But yeah, it's <laughs> very much solidly in the, the hard zone right now. So All right. So, no, I so what we can kind of look forward to is, you know, getting some, maybe some graphic novels from you, keeping an eye on that. But if somebody likes what you're doing, would like to follow you, where can they find you out there on social media? Yeah, I'm on IG. So um, I, I it, it's, uh, it's just my name, Ben, with my initial, middle initial. So it's Ben C. Wong, if they want to find me out there. I actually, you know, is I... And right now I'm planning on just basically posting those graphic novels on social media directly so people can just read them. So I don't know if that would turn into something eventually that you can like buy, you know, like a print version of, but um, initially I just wanted to really put it out there on social media. So um, I'll, I'll be posting it on um, Instagram. Oh, okay. That'll be a lot of posts. It'll be a lot of posts. We'll see. I, you know, maybe it's like the first, you know, 20 pages will be on Instagram and then, you know, eventually it'll be on, you know, the full version will be somewhere else, but it's, I'm a, all figuring it out as we go along. So do you have a website that they can track along with that? Yeah, I have a website. It's my name again, uh, my, my full name. So Benjamin Wong.com. So yeah, I'll probably post up there as well. If they want to find okay. me. Okay. That way they just kind of know where to look at. So now kind of you're, you've come into this career, like you said, at a little bit different way. Uh, maybe a little bit older than some, but not all, let me tell you. <laughs> but if someone else was to come to you now and say, hey, I want to become a filmmaker, what piece of advice would you give them? Well, um, I think there's no substitute for doing. You know, I think as filmmakers, as as a writer, you know, it's really easy to spend a lot of time in our heads um, I think any, any artist, any creator, I think it's a lot, of, it's very easy to spend time in your, your head. And I think there's no substitute for taking action and just making stuff and, you know, getting feedback. I think for me, the, the best thing about actually seeing this film through and getting the response of people like you, Dan, of audience members, of just my friends, of my wife, really, you know, it's like, 
that was closing the loop for me. And I think that's so, that's like the most valuable thing. So I think however you can close that loop in terms of just making something and then seeing how people feel about it, whether it's, you know, a screenplay and getting notes about that. I mean, I will say, I think with writers groups, um, it sounds like you're, you know, you're in a writer's group. Uh, the group is really important, right? I think, I think, you know, not to be negative, I think the wrong writers group can actually like send you down the, the, the wrong path too, because you might just be writing stuff that the other writers don't like. It doesn't mean that no one will like it, but it might just not be their like cup of tea too. So, and that's hard. I don't have like a clear, easy answer for that. But, um, you know, I mean, if you can actually make stuff, if you can write it, if you can actually put it online somewhere and just get that feedback and then just repeat, just repeat, do it over and over. I think that is like the most valuable thing in the world. Um, it's more valuable than some, another writer or another like, or even me as a filmmaker telling you what I think, like just getting the feedback of the world is, is, is incredible, you know? And just like, yeah, and just make stuff. And like, I think we can also place a lot of pressure on ourselves of, you know, with this film, like sometimes people are like, oh, this is your de debut feature. And even just that, that line, like debut feature, it feels like there's a lot of um, like psychic weight attached to it. It's like, oh, you know, big deal. This is like my first film. I mean, it's a big deal to me, but I don't think other should, people should be like, oh, this is not like my declaration to the road of like who I am. Like, I just want to make more stuff. I want to keep making stuff, you know, this hopefully just becomes like one film. I mean, famous last words, but you know, hopefully this is just one piece of work and a body of work, you know, so. All right. Just making stuff and like not stressing out about it too much. <laughs> that, that sounds really good. So as we're kind of moving to the end of this, would you like to give a final call out or a recommendation, anything you'd like to say uh, to anybody watching? Or... Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, would you say like your audience is, is generally fans? Is it like other um, creators? Okay, so, so I will say mine's a weird group of people out there. Uh, so like when i say if you want to give thoughts yeah. if you want to thank people and that that's a good time for doing it now you know, you know practice your oscar winning speech um yeah yeah but yeah, no i mean i mean in terms of thanking people yeah yeah i was going to say about my audience i review tabletop games books and movies so it's a very diverse group of artistic talents fans people looking for recommendations a lot of times other creators all the way across the board so yeah, it's a it's a very broad group. Awesome. Yeah, I mean as far as uh shouting out people, I mean there's just I think the the true nature of the business is it's like film is like a team sport. Making films is a team sport. So, um I'm not going to list people cuz I don't think that would be of interest, but I just I mean, yeah, I just I'm so thankful to the the cast and crew that I got to work with on this and you know, the film you see is really just a sum of like so many people's um, creative talents in this. So yeah, shout out to our cast and crew, shout out to my family for supporting me to make this film, to my wife um, for supporting me um, with two young children. So yeah, it's really just a team sport. And um, yeah, I feel really lucky to have been able to been been involved with this. And I mean, as far as your audience, uh, yeah, I really think, um, I, I, the film really resonates, I think, for people that have like kids or like nieces and nephews. Um, yeah, check check out the film, and I think you might like it. So, well, I will say this: it got accepted in. It's got some nominations, which are really good. You know, to get accepted into Film Quest because I, not directly associated with, but knowing some of the things, uh, is quite a co accomplishment in and of itself. So, feel oh, good you. about that because. Uh, between short and features, I think they said they had over 1,800 submissions this year. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, honestly, it's it's such an honor. I'm so excited to go to Film Quest. Um, I kind of can't believe it, but uh, I'll, I'll take it. So, <laughs> Okay. So what we'll do is we'll tell everybody, check out Ba. It's going to be showing at Film Quest. It's got a couple other festivals that are going to be closing out its run. Uh, possible distribution coming up in the works. So we'll kind of keep an eye out for on the other platforms. You can follow Ben on his website and Instagram. I'm sure when that does happen, 
you'd put out all the information for it. And it sounds like you're really more into the graphic design work. So I'm kind of, I think it'll be fun to see what you come out in the storytelling and the graphic novels. So exactly. thank you everyone thank you, for Dad. joining us. Support the independent creators. I think it's a great way to go about just working through everything and finding out great new stuff. Um, so again, like I say, thank you once again. If you like what we're doing here, please like it, share it out with other people. Um, like you said, Baza, it's a different twist on a father-daughter story. So everybody, thank you for joining and uh, we'll talk to you all soon. Thank you so much, Dan.